What's up, YouTube family? Welcome to the Linked Up Church online experience. We're so glad that you've chosen to connect with us today. Before we jump into the message, we wanted to let you know that we have a ton of great content for the whole family. We have great videos for your small children in the Little Linkland section, for your kids in the Linked Up Kids section, and relevant services for your teenagers from the plug. We'd love to be a blessing to your whole family, so check out these videos when you can. Oh, and don't forget to subscribe to this channel so you never miss a video from us. Now, let's get started. We're talking about cultivating an attitude of gratitude. And so we're going to look at the definition of cultivating, the definition of attitude, and then the definition of gratitude. And then we're going to put those three together and kind of do a summary sentence from those three definitions. And so cultivating means to produce by culture to promote the growth or development of or to foster. How many know God wants a culture of thankfulness and gratitude? Attitude is the position or posture of the body appropriate to or expressive of an action or emotion. So how many of y'all know we can t see your attitude by your expressions? Right? right, either on your face or just by your body, how it's moving. I mean, no, our expressions and our attitude in here should be a big smile on our face. Come on, somebody, hands lifted up and just ready to just thank and give God glory. Can you all practice that for a second? I don't see no teeth out there. Just let me just see teeth and now hands, right? That's the culture that God's trying to cultivate. And then gratitude is the quality or feeling of being grateful or thankful. Does anyone in this room have anything to be thankful for? Yeah. Not a lot on this side. Does anyone over here have anyone, anything to be grateful for and thankful for? We all do, right? But sometimes we focus too much on what we don't have versus what we do have. And so if you put all three of these definitions together, it means to produce a culture that promotes growth and development. It positions and postures itself for the appropriate and expressive quality of being thankful. Somehow in our society today, even if you compliment someone, it becomes very challenging for them just to say thank you. They almost have to explain away your compliment instead of just being grateful that somebody took the time to stop and tell you how nice you look today how nice your hair looked, how nice your outfit looked. Don't explain that away. Oh, this thing, I just, just threw on a little something. No, just say thank you. All right, let's practice this a little bit. Compliment your neighbor on either side. Put, put something in them right now. Compliment them. And then don't, don't say nothing but thank you. All right, now you turn around and compliment them. Now, now you turn right back around and give them a compliment. Only thing is, just say thank you. It's a good practice to have. So where the goal the Holy Spirit wants to create here at Linked Up Church is to produce a culture that promotes growth and development. And it positions and postures itself for the appropriate and expressive quality of being thankful. Let's look at our opening text today. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 15, it's from our chapter that this church is called uh, out of. It says, let your heart always be guided by the peace. I don't want to go by that. I'm really focusing on the part B portion of that text, but I don't want to go by that. Other translation says, let, let your heart, let the peace of God rule. I think the Amplify says, let it, the word rule, let it guard and mount guard in your heart. Let it call off questions that arise in your mind, safe or out. How many know the peace of God can be a good guide for you? Right? And, and so, the Passion Translation reads it this way. It says, let your heart always be guided by peace. Now, this word peace here is a Greek word irony, and it simply means prosperity. It means one. It means quietness. It means rest, and it means to be set at one again. And so if you think about that, if we're supposed to let our hearts be guided by that, then that means our, our heart, we can come to learn to trust that when it is uneasy about a decision that we're making. 
Right? Anybody ever been there before where you, in here, in your heart, you were like, uh, and you just didn't have any rest, any quietness about that. You kept revisiting it, right? You kept talking it over and over. You kept bouncing it off of somebody else. You've got to learn how to trust that because it is a safe God. God is literally trying to lead you by a wonderful gift that he's graced you with, and that's his peace. So, it says, let your heart be always guided. There'll be times when your head says yes, but your heart says no. Which one should you trust? Because a lot of times in our head, it's called previous experience. Yeah. And so if it worked before, guess what? We're going right back to it, <laughs> right or wrong. Trust your heart. So, so let your heart be always guided by the peace of the anointed one who called you to peace as part of his one body. And then watch this. And always be thankful. What's left after always? So that means every day of your life, you should be thankful. No bad attitudes in here. No irritable people. Not when you come in here. No people that won't, don't want to be bothered with other people. Just thankful people. Is that what kind of church we have? Is that what kind of church we have? Now, this word thankful here means to be well favored, and it means to be grateful. So, whether you realize it or not, God has favored you. And if nothing else, you're in here and not in a hospital. I would say he's favored you. Somebody ought to be, oh, man, you're missing a moment there, right? See, I'd rather be in here than in the best hospital in the state of Georgia. That means God's favored me. Did you have anything to eat this morning in your refrigerator? You know how many people didn't have something to eat this morning? That means God's favored you. And, and so maintain this posture of being grateful. So in just a few days, we'll celebrate Thanksgiving in the United States of America. But the irony of that is this. On Thanksgiving Day, we do very little giving of thanks. We pray before we eat, Lord bless it. <laughs> right? Lord, thank you for this meat. Now let's eat. <laughs> In Jesus' name, right? So we do very little giving of thanks. We pray before we eat, but that's really about it. Most of our day is preoccupied with football. I just wanted that to marinate a little bit. So, so most of our day is preoccupied with football, cooking, eating, and socializing. Very little giving of thanks. But the day was set aside as a holiday to give God thanks. So imagine God's people, if we don't do what the holiday was set aside to do, we missed the whole reason that it was set aside. All right? I'm going somewhere with that. So I want to challenge you all to make Thanksgiving different starting this year. And I'm going to give you an opportunity and tell you what that looks like. Spend time thanking God for all that he's done for you. Amen. Right? How can you make Thanksgiving, think about it, more meaningful for you and your family? I want you to think about that because it's important, okay? Now, let's look at point number one today. You may not know this, but the Bible gives us five ways to express our gratitude to the Lord. And whether you knew it or not, in point number one, gratitude is a miracle-creating attitude. Did you all know that if you have an attitude of gratitude, you stay in position to receive miracles? And I'm not talking about we, us just singing about them. I'm talking about you experiencing them in your life consistently. I don't believe miracles went out with the apostles. They're still alive today. How many of y'all believe that? Okay. Now, it, gratitude has the power to transform seemingly unfavorable situations. 
And sometimes God will allow us to get in a situation that we can't see our way out so he can show you how great he is. So when you think and praise God in the midst of a problem, he'll do a miracle and turn things around for you. And I'll prove it to you in a moment. Does anyone in here need a miracle? Raise your hand if you need a miracle. Look around this room. All right. I'm getting ready to give you some insight. If you do, be grateful. I'm going somewhere with that. In Acts chapter 16, it's nothing you've never heard before, but we're going to look at it a little different. In Acts chapter 16, it demonstrates the power of gratitude. See? Paul and Silas had gone to Philippi to preach and to teach. I mean, you know, you can be doing good and still get busted in the head about something. Anybody here just thought you were doing all the right things and still got knocked out? Yeah. I'm going to show you why sometimes God allows that to happen. So they were on their way to Philippi to preach and to teach, right? But they weren't well received. In fact, the crowd stoned them, beat them, and then threw them in the prison. Now, how many of y'all know human nature right there? We upset with all kind of people. Come on, can we just be real people in here today? Slap me, beat me, and then put me in prison? Come on, I'm, I'm talking about some stuff in there. I'm in there like, wait till I get out of here, right? Let me see one of them on my way back. Right, right or wrong, right? I, I, can we just be honest? Is that right or wrong? And I'm swinging at people trying to put chains on me and lock me up, right? I, I'm not really receiving this unless I know something greater than what they're trying to do to me. So at midnight, now how many of y'all know that midnight doesn't just represent the time on the clock? Midnight can also mean the darkest moment in your life. Right? And so they're in a dark, damp, cold prison. Paul and Silas said, you know what? Let's start singing praises to God and singing songs of thanksgiving while in stocks, bleeding. Come on, somebody for just trying to preach the gospel. The end result was that God did a miracle. See, it's not really thanking God for my situation. It's being able to be thankful in my situation. I'm going somewhere with this that actually demonstrates I know God can bring me out of my situation. Let's look at Acts 16 together. I'm going to read out of the Passion Translation. It says here, Paul and Silas was undaunted, daunted, in other words, unchanged. See, a lot of people change based off of their circumstances, right? And so when it's going great, God is good. Hallelujah. Thank God. Glory to God, right? Soon as something hits them, I don't know why God allowed that to happen to me. I do this. I do that. I thought God. God, I thought you. Only thing that changed was circumstances. God actually didn't change. He's still the same. So Paul and Silas were undaunted, and they prayed in the middle of the night and sang songs of praise to God. And while all the other prisoners listened to their worship, suddenly, see that word suddenly there means unaware and unexpectedly. Now think about it. When we pray, we actually believe we receive, right? How many of y'all actually practice that? When we pray, we believe we receive. What I love about God is we just don't know when it's going to happen. Right? And God usually comes through when we're not expecting it. Anybody ever been there before where you just a normal day, woke up, right, went to work, wasn't thinking about much, and bam, all of a sudden your life just changed because of something that you prayed. But, but I promise you it'll never change if you don't keep this posture of gratitude. So suddenly a great earthquake shook the foundations of the prison and all at once every prison door flung open and the chains of all the prisoners came loose. Now if you can handle this folks, sometimes God will put you in situations because he's trying to save everybody else that's in that same situation. Oh. 
Oh, Jesus. Right? And they can't get freedom on their own. They actually need your faith in order for them to get free. And so God will put you right there in the midst of that, right with them, so that you can show them how to walk through something like that and come out gold on the other side. I ask the question, does anybody need a miracle in this place today? Then, then maintain an a attitude and a posture of gratitude. I'll tell you a little bit more to that story. The jailers, as soon as they saw that all the prisoners were released, the jailer went to go kill himself. Paul grabbed the jailer and said, do no harm to yourself, sir. Right? The jailer's response was, what must I do to be saved? <laughs> See, and what God wants to do is deliver you so well that the world around you that's watching... They respond to that by, what, what can I do to get some of that on my life? Come on, somebody. Because we were all in the same situation. But, but while I was over there complaining, you were over there praising God. And then I had to stop complaining and listen to you worship and give God praise. And then I witnessed a miracle and all of us are free because of your obedience. Hello, somebody. Oh, you're in the situation that you're in right now because it's bigger than you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who needs a miracle in here today? Stand on your feet if you need a miracle. Stand on your feet. Look around this room, right? And at the end of this message today, I'm going to bring the worship praise team back up here. And you're going to have an opportunity to respond. Because what God will be looking for is not see me praying for you because so, that's you wanting something from him. He's already done what you want from him. It's what he wants from you that he's after. And that's your heart and your ability in it to say, God, you are good. And sing and worship God right in the midst of it. Now, if someone is standing up around you, stretch your hands towards them right now. And so, Father, I join my faith and add my agreement with every person in here who needs a miracle. You are a miracle-working God, Father. And so I thank you that as they respond through an attitude of gratitude and a heart of thanksgiving, Father, as they worship you, Father, you have already released the miracle that they need, Father. And they're going to walk right into it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, if you believe that, go ahead and thank God like you already have it. Come on, go ahead and thank God like you already have it. And see if you don't see it. All right, now let's look at Luke chapter 17. Let's look at Luke chapter 17. What are we talking about here, folks? Gratitude is a miracle-creating attitude. Look at Luke chapter 17, and let's look at it another way. I'm going to read out of the Message Bible, beginning at verse 11. It says, And it happened that as he made his way towards Jerusalem, he crossed over the border between Samaria and Galilee. And he entered a village. Ten men, all lepers, met him. Somebody say ten men. Ten. How many men are we talking about here? Ten. ten men. All lepers met him. They kept their distance, but they raised their voices, calling out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. Have compassion on us. I mean, you know, sometimes you got to stop caring about what you look like. Some of y'all dressed a little too nice. Some of y'all too cute. Some of y'all wore, don't wear that. If you can't praise God, then don't wear that to church. Come, come on, somebody. If you, come on, if you can't give God that, if, you, if, that, if that is just too much for you to, don't wear it no more. Right? Because sometimes life can hit you in the mouth so hard that you got to get ugly. You got to get loud. You got to make some noise. You got to scream out, Lord Jesus, Master, have mercy on me. 
And you can't care what other people look about you. Look, look, think about you with your educated, sophisticated degrees and, and, and all of your money and all of your career status and, and your car that you drive. Forget all of that. Sometimes you just got to sweat a little bit. Get ugly in church. Come on. Let God know that I need you. See, that got Jesus' attention. The scripture says Jesus taking a good look at them. I mean, no, he's walking on the road, and then he's like, whoa, who is this yelling at the top of their lungs like that? Taking a good look at them, he said, go show yourself to the priest. Now, what you've got to understand in Jewish culture, lepers had to live in a colony. And if they were seen outside of that colony, then they would be stoned to death. So, so what Jesus is saying to him, if you really believe I can do what you're asking me to do, then your response should be, because the, the way to get free was you had to get a certificate of healing from the priest that demonstrated you were clean. So Jesus looked at him and he said, now go show yourself to the priest, still full of leprosy. See, and what you've got to understand your situation is not going to change until you change. Man, I'm preaching much better than anybody saying amen. See, we actually want to believe God right in our comfort zone. But it is going to require you to respond and take a risk. Come on, somebody. So Jesus said, go show yourself to the priest. And then it says, they went and while still on their way, they became clean. So guess what? If they would have stayed, they would have stayed lepers. Nothing took place until they turned and began to walk. See, for some of you all, you've been believing too long and not doing anything. Oh, Jesus. Right? And it's time for you to start walking towards your miracle. Come on, somebody. It's time for you to start walking towards what you know God said to you. Come on, all God, all Jesus gave him was a word. All he said was, go show yourself to the priest. All you're ever going to get from God is the word of God. And then can you receive it and then walk in the direction that it's taking you, even when everything in your life looks against that, even when everything in your life looks like it is not working, you're still saying, I'm standing on the word of God. And having done all to stand, I'll stand some more and walk in the direction that I know God is leading me in. And then here's the wisdom. One of them, when he realized he was healed, turned around and came back, shouting his gratitude, glorifying God. And he kneeled at Jesus' feet so grateful he couldn't thank him enough. And then the scripture says, and he was a Samaritan, which means the other nine must have been Jews, which meant they knew better. But see, sometimes we can be in church so long, all we really want is what he can do for us. Come on, and then once we get it, we just go on about our business. We don't even think about returning back to remember where it came from in the first place. And I'm telling you, not so here at Linked Up Church. Come on, I want to give God, somebody give God a resounding thanksgiving of praise in this place. I'm talking about a resounding thanksgiving of praise in this place. One, only one return. And I'll show you that Jesus, there was a built-in expectation here, right? Look at Jesus' response. Look at his response here. Only one of them, when he realized that he was healed, turned around and came back, shouting his gratitude, glorifying God. He kneeled at Jesus' feet. When is the last time you came to church and just kneeled? And so See, we're not broken anymore. When was the last time you came to church and just laid out? Because God's been so good to you. This man was so thankful, he couldn't thank God enough. When have you thanked God so much that you still, you could just go on forever? Father, thank you for waking me this morning. Thank you for a bed to sleep in. Thank you for a shower to get clean in. 
Thank you for toothpaste to brush my teeth with. Thank you for a toothbrush to put the toothpaste on to brush my teeth. Uh, thank you for lotion to put on my body. Thank you for, for, for uh, I was gonna say a comb to comb my hair. But, but clippers to shave my head. Come on, somebody. Somebody ought to be thankful for the clippers. And how many of you know you can just go on and on and on and on because there are people that are homeless out there sleeping in tents and it's cold outside. So only one of them came back shouting his gratitude and he kneeled at Jesus' feet. He was so grateful he couldn't thank him enough and he was a Samaritan. Jesus says, were there not ten healed? But where are the nine? See, can none be fine to come back and give glory to God except this outsider? Then he said to him, get up on your way. Now notice what this man ended up getting. See, how many you know you can get healed and miss heaven? A lot of people come in healing lives and get healed and still die and go to hell. Because sometimes he, healing is God's calling card to the lost. And he'll use healing to draw you to him. See, this man not only got healed, but he got saved. The word save, save comes from a Greek word sozo. So he, had, he got delivered, he was protected, he was rescued, he was restored, he was made whole. Everything he lost, he couldn't work when he had leprosy. Come on, somebody. Everything he lost, God returned it back to him. See, all the rest of them just got healed. See, I don't just want healing and miss heaven. Now, I'll prove this to you. God hates murmuring and complaining. Sin didn't keep the children of Israel out of the promised land. You know what kept the children of Israel out of the promised land? Murmuring and complaining. Y'all still glad you came to church today? You know, I feel like the devil is upset right now. Can we just go ahead and split his eardrums real quick? Come on, just, just make him run out of here and start terror. Glory to God. Somebody say, I'm thankful. thankful. Somebody say, I'm, I'm grateful. grateful. Now go ahead and just shout praises and thanksgiving to God. Let's look at another one here in Matthew chapter 15. Anybody in here been diagnosed with an incurable disease. That's all leprosy was. It was an incurable disease. Stand up on your feet. I heard that Holy Spirit. He said, don't let that window pass because people have faith to believe right now. Now, I want if somebody is standing around you, if you can put your hand on them, put your hand on them, right? Uh, and everybody else, just stretch your hands towards them. If you've been diagnosed with an incurable disease, and so, Father, I add my agreement right now, and I join my faith with my dear sisters and brothers, Father. Whatever the doctor said is incurable to man is curable to God because all things are possible to those who believe, Father. So they're believing today, and we're joining our faith with them, Father. And you said that where two or three are gathered together in your name, that you are right there in the midst, Father. And whatever we make good here on earth, you'll make it good in heaven. So I reverse that incurable disease right now. I reverse it and curse it at its root. Father, and I command those bodies to line up and be normal now in Jesus' name. Now, if you believe that, just go ahead and thank God. Come on, give God glory. Come on, somebody praise God with them. Come on, somebody praise God with them. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. He can heal leprosy. And nobody touched those lepers. Nobody laid hands on those lepers. 
only thing he did was he spoke his word. He said, go show yourself to the priest. And as they went, I just believe some of y'all while on your way back to the doctor. Come on, somebody. Just, just believe in God. Come on, somebody. Praising God and worshiping God. Come on, power of God is going to hit your body. And the doctor is going to release a different, completely different report about your situation. In Jesus' name. Do I have any believers in here that believe that? Come on, let's look at one more. Matthew chapter 15. What are we talking about? We're talking about gratitude. It's a miracle-creating attitude. People complain too much about everything. Some people, you just can't do nothing right. You ever been around people like that? No matter what you do, they're going to find something negative to complain about. Let's, let's stop being like that. Matthew chapter 15. I think I will. Somebody say, take your time, Pastor. Somebody say, take your time, Pastor. Say it one more time. Yeah, y'all wouldn't say that. You see that? People wouldn't say that. They were like, it's good, but finish on time. <laughs> Matthew chapter 15, 32 through 39 says, now, Jesus called his disciples to himself and said, I have compassion on the multitude. I'm reading out of the New King James Version. Because they have now continued with me three days and have nothing to eat. I do not want them to, do not want to send them away hungry, lest they faint on the way. Then his disciples said to him, sometimes, you know, they can be this way. Where could we get enough bread in the wilderness to feed feel such a great multitude. Now, how I many know oh, you really want your staff to be in agreement with you? <laughs> family, come on, family. Sometimes you go right to your family, right? I'm not talking about my staff. I'm just telling you, sometimes you can go right to people that are the closest to you, and they can't see what you see. But it should not change what you believe God told you. Because sometimes God will still use you to show them that he's with you. Okay, watch this now. We can't get nothing to help these folks. Jesus said to them, well, then how many loaves do you have? And they said seven and a few little fish. Now, again, you have to read the commentary to know how they're saying this. In other words, it's 4,000 4, people out here, Jesus. <laughs> what we have is not getting ready to... Right. So they said, that's how they said it. Mm, a few little loaves. <laughs> how many of y'all know when you don't want to give nobody nothing? <laughs> oh, you know, you have a whole lot of money in your pocket, boy, but you're like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, rent due, got to pay the card no. Holiday season, we got gifts to buy. I know when you don't want to give people something, you downplay what you have. And they said seven and a few little fish, seven little few fish. So he commanded the multitude to sit down on the ground, and he took the seven loaves and the fish, and he did what? And he did what? And he did what? See, so sometimes when you don't have enough, the best thing you can do is lift up what you have and be thankful for that. Oh, Lord, I'm preaching way better than anybody saying amen. So instead of sitting around complaining and talking about what we don't have and it's not enough and da-da-da-da-da and we need and I need and, and we don't have enough and we're sure, why don't we just gather up what we have and lift it up before the Father? And then just like he does, because your heart is grateful, you're positioning yourself. Anybody ever been in a situation where he made your money last longer? Come on, am I the only one that's been in that situation? I'm talking about he stretched that $25, boy. Somehow I got gas in the tank. Come on, somebody. A happy meal. And I, come on, and I like my happy meals. Come on, somebody, because I'm a happy man. Just give me my happy meals, and I'll be a happy man. Somehow he stretched that $25. 
And I looked back at the end of the week and I said, I ate every day. I got everywhere I needed to go. Come on, somebody. The car didn't break down. Come on. And everything with $25, he stretched. You know why? You were probably just grateful. And so every time he gave thanks and he broke it, God multiplied it, right? And so in verse 37, they all ate and they were filled. And then if you know anything about God, he wastes nothing. So what started off as not enough ended up being with leftovers. Anybody ever been there before? Where you look back and you ended up having more than what you started with. Come on, I need somebody to praise God in this place today, right? So then they took up seven large baskets full of fragments that were left. Now, they started off with just seven loaves and a few fish. Now they got seven large baskets. See, what you don't understand is when you're grateful, God will always give you back more than what you have, right? And then it says here, and now those who ate were 4,000 men besides women and children. Now, if you know anything about anything, if there are 4,000 men there, <laughs> come on, there's some, hey. there's some single ladies there, boy, like. So I, I'm just throwing it out there. I, I say half of those men were married. Would you agree? Most likely. So we'll say 2,000 weren't. So, so there's at least 4,000 ladies there. <laughs> so, so we're talking about potentially eight to 10,000 people who ate off of a few loaves and a few fish. All because one person was grateful. So notice how everybody can eat if you'll be grateful. <laughs> Music department. We're going to close here with, we got five points here. I'm only going to get to two today. Point number two is we've got to learn how to sing our thanksgiving to him. I want us to stop coming to church waiting on somebody to pump you up. Why can't you come to church pumped up? Come on, I'm preaching better than anybody saying amen. Stop. This is not a spectator sport. This is a participator sport. I'm going to prove it to you from the word of God. See, it's our belief in God and the kingdom. See, this, this is a singing faith that we have, right? Uh, this belief that we have is a singing faith. If you study your Bible, there are more songs about Jesus Christ than anything else. Right? Even love. So we need to, as a church, learn how, to, learn how to sing our thanks to God and praise him joyfully. And see, so if you ever wonder why praise and worship is at the beginning of the service, because most of the time you can't receive in the kingdom until you first give something. So you end up getting out of the service what you put in. So if you don't come in and give him what's due unto his name, come on, somebody. You get very little out of it. So you walk out, come in, and you walk out the exact same way. Few things make you aware of God's presence more quickly than singing praise to him. If you ever want to get into the presence of God quickly, then learn how to sing praises and thanksgiving and worship him. Psalms 140 and verse stanza 7, the Passion Translation says, Sing out with songs of thanksgiving to the Lord. Let's sing our praises with melodies overflowing. Psalms 100, stanzas 1 through 5, this is a poetic song of thanksgiving. And it says here in stanza 1, lift up a great shout of joy to the Lord. Eight people caught that. See, that's what I'm talking about, spectating. That's a word, and we have to respond to it. Let me read it again says, lift up a great shout of joy to the Lord. See, so notice what the word says here. Just in case you didn't hear, go ahead and do it, everyone everywhere. Everyone everywhere. 
go ahead and do it. Everyone, everywhere, go ahead and do it. Everyone, everywhere, go ahead and do it. Everyone, everywhere, go ahead and do it. It says, as you serve him, be glad and worship him. Sing your way into his presence with joy and realize what this really means. We have the privilege of worshiping the Lord our God. For he is our creator and we belong to him. And we are the people of his pleasure. You can pass through his open gates with the password of praise. See, I think we need to start stopping people at the back doors before we even let them in. And we need to ask the, the question. How I many know you can't get in your iPads without a password? Come on. You can't get on your phone without a password. Come on. T -t Today, you can't cut your TV on without a password. Maybe we need to check everybody at the door and ask them what the password, what's the password? And if you don't say hallelujah, glory to God, I'm so thankful today. God is good, and he is good all the time. You can't get in. Go back out in the, in the foyer and sing a little more and praise and worship. Go back out in your car and turn a, turn a song on, and then come back and try again. And we're going to line all the ushers up again and ask you, what's the passcode? Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. God has been so good to me. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Glory to God. Says you can't pass through his open gates with the password of praise. Come right into his presence with what? Come bring your thank offering to him and affectionately bless his beautiful name. For the Lord is always good. That means that there's not a moment in your life when God is not good. Come on, somebody. I said there's not a moment in your life when God is not good and ready to receive you. He's so loving that it will amaze you. He's so kind that it will astound you. And he is famous for his faithfulness, his trustworthiness towards us all. Everyone knows our God can be trusted, for he keeps his promises to every generation. Come on. Right, we serve a promise keeper. Come on, somebody. We serve a promise keeper. Glory to God. Now, let's all stand to our feet. And our music department is going to come, and they're going to just usher us in for about three to five minutes, okay? The front of the sanctuary is open. If you were one of those individuals that we prayed for you at the beginning, you need a miracle. You've been diagnosed with an incurable disease, right? Or maybe you're in a position. Is there anyone in here that has lack right now? Raise your hand if you have lack. Raise your hand. Wait, wait one second, music department. One second, music department. Raise your hand if you have lack. Raise your hand. Look around this room. What I mean is what you have right now is not enough to meet your needs. Raise your hand right now. Raise your hand. Okay? If you see someone with their hand lifted up, stretch your hands towards them right now. And, Father, we pray for them right now. As they give thanksgiving and praise and they sow financial seeds, Father, you promised in your word. You said that my God will supply all of their needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. So I declare that all of their needs are met now, supernaturally, in Jesus' name. Amen. Come on, somebody thank God for that. Come on, lift that up. Come on, lift that up. Thank God for that. That's, that's the proper response. Okay? Now I'm going to open the front of this stage up. So if you were in any three, one of those three groups, or you weren't, but you just need to be thankful and express that. But if you were prayed for today, incurable disease, you need a miracle, or you're in a position where what you have is not enough to cover your bills, this is your moment to respond and demonstrate ahead of time that you believe God's already done for you what he said he's going to do. Let's go ahead. Take us there, Minister Bernard. Yeah. While you're walking, declare that I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. No matter what I see or how I feel, 
As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. As long as I'm breathing, oh yes I'm breathing, I'll bless the Lord. Somebody fill this room with praise, let's go. Come on, linked up. Let's say it loud, come on. Say, I will bless the Lord. And his praises, and his praises shall continually be in my mind. No matter what I, no matter what I see or how I feel, I feel as, long as, as long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing out. Oh, as long as I'm breathing, oh yes, I'm breathing. Oh, magnify, oh, magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. Together. Together, let's lay down our let's crowns, down yeah. our crowns. And, lift and lift up his name. Let's do it together. Follow me, let's say it again. Oh, magnify, magnify the Lord with Come on. me. Let us exalt his let's name. Exalt his Together, name. Together. Let's, lay let's lay down our crowns. All of our issues, crowns. all of our problems. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. Hey, come on. Put your hands on it. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. Come on, if you know he's worthy of it. Let's do it together. Let's do it together. Yeah.
Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, if God's been better than good to, to anybody in this building. Come on, give God one more just great big hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. You've been better than good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. That is the atmosphere that God's trying to cultivate around here. Where we have an attitude of gratitude. Because when we maintain that, it always postures us and positions us to receive a miracle. And I want to give an opportunity right now for the greatest miracle ever known to mankind. This was when somebody is snatched out of darkness and placed into God's marvelous light. So everyone that's down here, I want you to stay right here for a moment. I want to give three invitations in this room today. I want everyone just watching, paying attention right now, searching your spirit. You found yourself you couldn't praise God, it's be probably because you don't know God. It wasn't because you didn't want to, it was actually you couldn't. And that's an indication that I, my heart is just, I'm not there. And so don't let that condemn you. Let that motivate and inspire you. That I need to get that in my life because that's why God sent you here today. For a believer, it's a natural response to praise God. It's a natural response to thank God. So when you stand there and you can't do anything, it's an indication that my heart is not right with God. And so if you're in this building today and you don't have a personal relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ, I want to pray with and for you. It's real simple. Confess with your mouth, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the son of God, that God raised him from the grave. You can be born again today. And then the next time we have a service like this, your heart will be free to just praise and worship God the way he created you to. Secondarily, you might be in this building and you just got away from God. And again, your heart won't deceive you. That's why you couldn't praise him because you know you've gotten away from him. You're out of fellowship. The only reason he sent you here today was to woo you back to himself because he loves you that much. So again, don't let that condemn you. Let that inspire you to get your life back right with God. Some churches call that being backslidden. We simply just call, call it being out of fellowship. God never left you because he said he'd never leave you nor forsake you. You left him. And all he's doing right now is just waiting with open arms, just waiting on you to come back home. And then just like the leper, so he can begin the process of restoring everything back to you that you lost while you were out there. And then my final invi invitation. Every sheep needs a shepherd. Everyone needs to be a part of a local church family. My wife and I, the staff, if you decide today to join Linked Up Church, we promise you we'll pray for you every single day of our lives. Every time you come in this building, just like today, we're, we're not here to entertain you. We'll make sure that you get the word of God and the word of God only. So if you believe in your heart that God has confirmed that this is where he wants you or maybe you and your family to join, we'll be happy to receive you today. So now while every head is bowed, every eye is closed in prayer, no one moving, no one talking, unless you've been assigned to do so. And I'm even speaking to the people that are right here at the altar, right? And so if you want prayer on any one of those three invitations, you want to give your life, you want to get saved, and have a personal relationship with God through his son, Jesus Christ, or you are saved, but you got away from God, you're saying, I want to return and rededicate, or you want to join Linked Up Church. I want to pray for you, but I only know that you desire my prayers by the lifting up of your hand. So if you would, right where you're standing right now, and you want prayer on any one of those three invitations, would you shoot your hand up in the air right now? Just lift it up. Keep it up as high as you possibly can. I see those hands. I see those hands here at the altar. I see those hands. I see that hand. I see that hand in the riser. Thank God for your obedience. I see that hand, young lady. I see you over there. Would you all put your hands down for a moment? I believe there are other people in this room right now. Now, what I want you to use is your heart as the indicator. And so if you were not able to praise God, if you just couldn't do it, remember it wasn't because you wanted, you didn't want to. There was something that was keeping you from doing that. Right? And God wants to free you from that. 
right? That's called the enemy, and he's trying to keep you in bondage. And God's trying to free you today. So if you didn't raise your hand that first time, but in your heart you know you should have, you know you're, you want to have a relationship with God, you want to return to him, or you want to join Linked Up Church, would you shoot that hand up right now? Shoot it up, keep it up, lift it up. God's just opening up another door. I see you up there in the risers. I see you in the risers because he loves you that much. Anyone else on the floor? Anyone else? You didn't raise your hand. I see that hand right there. Thank you for your obedience. All right. I want you to do me. I see that hand right there, sir. I see that hand, ma'am. I want you all to do me one more favor. If you're down here at the altar and you raised your hand or you didn't raise your hand, but in your heart you know you should have, I want you to just stay. And then everyone that's out in the audience or in the risers, if you raised your hand, I want you to come to the front, okay? And so gather up all of your personal belongings and come meet me right down here. Linked Up Church, give them a big round of applause as they go. So everyone else that didn't raise their hand, you can go back to your seats. Everyone that did raise your hand, stay right down here at the front. Go ahead and sing a little something as they come. Hallelujah! We say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. You've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. Yeah, you've been better than good. You've been better than good to me. We say love better than good. You've been better than good to me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. You've been better than good to me. And we agree, thank you, Lord. God. Come on, Linked Up Church. Let's make these individuals feel real good today. All right? Praise God. There was a lot of moving, and I just want to make sure that we get everyone. Is there anyone else out there? And would you all just help me out? Because it's 1127, and so we're on time. And just look to your left or to the right. And if you're led, just ask them. You need to be saved? You want to rededicate? You want to join the church? I'll go down there with you. And then just grab their hands and gently bring them right on down and we're going to praise God and clap and give God glory like you've never heard before is anyone else like that anyone else risers are on the floor all right praise God then we've done our job today everyone that's here at the altar would you lift one hand towards heaven because that's where your help ultimately comes from if you're watching online right now this supplies to you as well if you want to give your life to Christ or you want to return to Christ or join Linked Up Church. I'm going to take care of two of those three invitations in this prayer. So I want you to lift up one hand towards heaven and follow right along. Then there'll be some information on your screen, which will be your next step. Make sure that you fill out that information. Everyone agree with me and pray this with me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, Dear Heavenly Father I, believe I believe that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is, the Son of God. is the Son of God. I believe, I believe that he died, that he died rose from the grave, and he is alive right now. Lord Jesus, come into my heart and save me now. As a result of what I've confessed with my mouth, what I believe in my heart, I am right now born again and in right standing with God. And all my sins are forgiven in Jesus' name. Linked Up Church, celebrate these wonderful people. Celebrate them. Okay? All right? I want you all to look to my left and your right. You see that young man with that Bible lifted up in the air? He's going to take you to another room. He's going to give you some challenges too. Today is November the 13th. If you do everything that they're instructing you to do, right? Everything that they're instructing you to do. Take your classes, get involved, get in connect groups, join a dream team. You'll look at your life one year from now and you won't even recognize yourself. So consider this your birthday and then look at November the 13th. 2023 and see how much different your life is okay go ahead and follow that young man 
Come on, give them another big round of applause as they go. Thank you so much for watching our online service. We certainly don't take that for granted. And if you enjoyed today's message and you want to get connected with us, we encourage you to become a part of our online community. That's right, and you can do that by subscribing to our YouTube channel, sharing this video with a friend, and following us on social media. Don't forget to meet us right here on this channel every Sunday for our services. If you desire to help us reach more people just like yourself and advance the kingdom of God, then click the Give button now. This will allow us to connect more people to God, their families, their purpose, and their communities. Thank you again for watching our service on today, and we'll, we'll see, see you next week. week.